Yeah! Hi, guys! So, how did you go from your work as an actor playing Bertier to playing Oak? And, and what was that like for your journey as an actor to compare and contrast the two? They're totally different. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think, you know, every character that I play, you know, it's kind of. Um, it's, it's a journey, you know, is that you read something and it's compelling and you think that it might be like you a little bit and then you start to do it and you find out things about that character that relate to you that you didn't see and, you know, over time and over pouring over the script more, um, you, learn, it's, you learn a lot about yourself in, you know, portraying these characters. You know, um, is I, re I remember when I was um, doing Opie, real like I think it was maybe the first season. I saw some of the dailies before they cut all of the episodes together, and I saw these little mannerisms that I was doing, and I was like, "Who is that? Like I'm stealing somebody." I'm like, and then I realized that I was actually uh, imitating the body language of uh, one of my younger brothers, whose name was Tad. And that actually helped me a lot because Opie was very stoic, very loyal. And in my family, my brother Tad, they, they, we call him Rock because he's, we're all kind of all over the place, but he is, you know, he's so, he's so sincere and so loyal and, you know, he's sort of unmovable. So I was like, oh, okay, so I'll just kind of Take my little brother, cut, paste, put him in a, you know, in a motorcycle game. And um, so, you know, but is, is going from one to the other, you kind of learn things about yourself, you know, as you age as a human being, um, you know, through these, through these characters. That's been my experience. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a favorite episode? Of Sons of Anarchy? Yes. Um, I like, you know, the, the, the episode where, where Opie died, I, I really liked it. I thought it was a great, a great episode. Um, as, you know, as sad as it was, yeah. is that, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, but that's what, you know, that's what good storytelling does. I mean, I didn't want to see Opie die just like everybody else did, you know, and, but the way that it was portrayed and the way that it made everybody feel, you know, and how that related to how Jacks was feeling yeah. for the trajectory of the rest of the show. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah I thought, I meant they daughter that. What's that? He's asking if you have kids. Oh, no, I don't have a daughter. Not yet. No. You know the girl up on the show? Yeah, that's, oh, that's right. That's right. Opie had a daughter. That's right. Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> She's not here. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Anything else? Go for it. Did you get in touch with any of your co-stars? Yeah, all of them. Yeah. Because we talk, um, especially Charlie and I talk a lot, uh, Boone and I, who play Bobby, talk all the time. Um, I see Tommy at these type of events all the time. Yeah, it's, it's genuinely, even this far after the show, it's, we're, we're still in very close contact. Yeah. So I saw a video um, of Boone and Charlie shaving your beard mm -hmm. on YouTube, and was that purposely so you could kind of fully say goodbye to Opie? Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's exactly what it was. I was going off to do um, a different show at the time, and you know, when you, when in television, it's it's really unique opportunity for an actor because what do we get to do? We get to do. If you're making a movie, you kind of create this portrait of something. You shoot it for three months, four months tops, and then it's done. You know. Um, but when you're on a show that goes for five years, seven years, you know, it becomes this sort of work of art that you're sort of making over a long period of time, it becomes very intimate to you. Um, so it was, it was nice to kind of do it as sort of elegantly as, as we could to kind of have a little ritual and say, 
you know, let this be the end. And then you had to grow it back, your beard, yeah. your hair. Yeah. So was, did it take long to grow? <laughs> no, no, no. It's, um, it's when I was, uh, I got a call from the Outsiders people and they were like, so please just don't cut your hair or your beard. I'm like, you know who you're talking to? Like, oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. What were your influences growing up? What made you want to get into acting? Um, well, my mother's an acting coach and my father is an actor and my stepdad uh, writes sometimes. Um, and then uh, I had a, a mentor in high school who was uh, a beautiful, you know, uh, dramatic coach as well. Um, but it was one of those things, you know, and of course my, my mother and my father wanted me to do anything but acting, you know. Um, but it was one of those things that that's all that I, that I wanted to do. Um, so that's um, uh, very shortly after high school, I just I, I started acting full time. What was your first job? My very first job was a spam commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I was standing there and, and uh, there was a news reporter who was the official spam news reporter who was just interviewing people about spam all over the United States, right? And, and, and I was standing on the street, on the street corner, and she said, so, <laughs> one can feeds three of you. <laughs> and I went, and I grabbed the mic and I said, or one of us three times. <laughs> My manager, <laughs> Sally Piper, right there, who's been my manager for how many years now? 23 years. Uh, she, was, she was there. She was there that day. She drove me to to um, to the audition and to the and to the to the set. Wow. So my second mother. How to find on on YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> no, or not. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, your character, Chick Hogan, uh, on Big Motel is a pretty interesting guy. And mm. what, what inspires you? Or you were able to put a little your take on it? Or did you want input from the producers or writers? Or is it all of you? Or? Um, that was one of those things that um, originally he was written as just sort of a biker. You know, he was a biker and a mechanic, and he had this shop. And uh, and originally he was supposed to die at the end of the third season. And and I wasn't really interested in just playing another character that, first of all, just died again. <laughs> was like, um, but and so I just had this sort of like flash of, of insight of behind this guy. And he was really inspired by uh, Mark Boone, my friend, who plays Bobby, who in real life, you know, is just so strange and beautiful and eccentric and like, you know, I remember showing up the first season to the set of Sons of Anarchy and he was wearing like a sarong. <laughs> and, he, and I was like, what's, what's up, man? He was like, it's, it's comfortable, it's free. <laughs> So I had this sort of, this, this feeling of this guy. And what's funny is, you know, um, I, I get kind of put myself in every, every department, whether it's makeup and sort of helping design a lot of the tattoos or in the wardrobe department. So when I'm going, I just kind of insert myself in, in, in the whole process. So I send a bunch of pictures, like, you know, 20 pages of, reference pictures of uh, for, for Chick to the wardrobe department. And then I also brought up like three suitcases full of, of costumes. Um, but like it, it was actually the first job that I showed up with all these things that I sort of um, put together. And what they had put together was a million times better. They, they pulled all of these really, really fun and I was like, <laughs> I looked at the at the um, at the wardrobe person. I was like, you get me. <laughs> like, you get me. So, yeah. So they they you know it was a, a really wonderful collaboration together. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get to keep any of your props from SOA when you left? Um, I 
kept my, my jacket, uh, my, my cut. Uh, I cut my jacket, my beanie, uh, and my knife. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, they called a bunch, they called around and they were, you know, they said, uh, when the show was over, and they said, do you want anything? And I said, uh, well, give me my bike. And they were like, we already gave away your bike. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I said, uh, I said, all right, so give me the casket that you buried. Oh my God. And, and my wife was like, <laughs> overheard me on the phone. She was like, hmm. <laughs> and I was like, no, I, I want the casket. And they said they were going to get it to me. They never showed up. It was probably for the best. Yeah. Can I have your cat? <laughs> <laughs> it would go, go to a good home, trust me. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Shifting gears a little bit back to Remember the Titans. Yeah. Uh, can you share some experiences? Because that looked like a really fun movie to make. Yeah. I mean, just so much singing and, and yeah. brotherhood type of things. So. Yeah. No, that was great. You know, we had, I think, about three weeks, maybe a month of just good old football practice. We did two days and ran drills the whole, the whole time. And me and I think one other person uh, were the only actors who had actually played. Uh, high school football. So I knew what I, what I was in for. Everybody else. And first of all, there was, there was like um, Ryan Gosling, uh, uh, and, and they never played football and never trained. So they they were dying, dying. So, but it was it was you know again one of those hardships that they put you through. You know, it just bonds everybody together. Um, but. That was, a, that was a blast to, to do. Um, one of the, you know, every job that, that I do has these nice little sort of magical moments that don't, that don't necessarily happen on the screen all the time, but was, it was the day before I was supposed to, um, to start shooting. And one of the production people came up, they said, we'd like for you to meet somebody uh, and I said, okay, and it was Gary's mom. And, and I walk over, and she's there, and before I even say anything, she looks at me and grabs my face and says, you remind me so much of my son. This is a mother whose you know, son had died, you know? And, and, I, and we talked for about two, two and a half hours. And she kept like saying, I'm so sorry, but you remind me so much. And it was, you know, it was one of those things that made me feel like you could put in a performance that was going to, you know, that was going to help heal people in a way. So, yes. Anything else? <laughs> you can ask me anything. <laughs> <laughs> I got a funny story. Well, so I do so I do these comic conventions, and then I also do like um, like motorcycle conventions. And I was at this motorcycle convention, you know, and everybody's drunk, and there's a dude that comes walking up who makes me look tiny. He's a good seven feet something. He's three fifty at least. He's gigantic, and he comes walking up to me. He's like, "He might if I ask you an ethic." Question. And I was like, "Yeah, hey man, what's up?" And he's like, "What do you put in your hair?" Argon oil. And that's about it. Uh, no, we're, we're shooting, we're almost done. We're on episode uh, 9 and 10. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, this second season is crazy. Well, I was so upset when, well, I don't want to give stuff away, yeah. but I was very upset on, and then I think like the second to last episode last season. Yeah. And then, obviously, <laughs> I was upset now. <laughs> 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 but anyway, so I'm excited. Good. Yeah, no, it, it's, it'll come back out in January, and um, yeah, we're all looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Anything else? Yeah.
Yeah. What uh, any any kind of pranks been pulled on on any sets to you or by you? Um, <laughs> one. So you know, on Sons of Anarchy, every, you know, we were all like a bunch of bear cubs. You know, it was like the, we were always wrestling, we were always fighting. It was just, it was great. But I remember. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the end of the day and we're all walking back to our trailers and Theo Rossi who played Juice had taken off his belt and just reared back and hit me across the back with it and I turned to him and I looked at him and he kind of like looked at it and looked up at me and, was, and went I don't know why I did that <laughs> I, I don't know why I did that and then I was like, one day. And he was like, no, 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 just, just do it now. Just get it over with. Like, one day. So uh, a year and a half later. Um, so uh, Harley Davidson had sort of signed on as a co-partner on the show. And they'd given us um, motorcycles to ride sort of as a promotional thing. And then at the end of like uh, each year, we would give them back. So we just had been maybe six to eight weeks after we'd given these bikes back and we're waiting to get um, this next round of bikes. And I, I coordinated with a friend of mine who was a very good sort of improvisational actor to give a call and say, we're calling from, from Harley, we, you know, about the bike that you returned, and we saw that you made a few adjustments to it, but we only know this because we sold the bike, and the person drove it off of the lot, and the brakes failed, and they got hit by a truck, and there, and, and, I, and he went into it, and, and I watched Theo receive that call, and he's shaking, and losing his mind, and, he's, and they're like, so, if you don't have a lawyer, we're suggesting that you go ahead and get one. It's going to be really important. And I and I walk by him, and he's closed it, and I said, "What's going on? You okay?" And he starts telling me about it, and I just start smiling. <laughs> and he's like, "What? Why are you smiling?" And I said, "One day." And he was like, "Oh my God, you are horrible." <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was it like shooting the uh, the death scene with uh, Agent Stahl? Oh, that was um, that was intense. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's, it, that was one of those things that, like, some parts of the performance you can you know take credit for, and others you can't. And some you work really, really hard on, you're like, oh god, I want to get this so right, and then it stinks. And um, to be totally honest, uh, that was one of those things that I was avoiding, because I was like, this is such a big moment, they've been building it up, and I didn't, you know, I was sort of avoiding uh, having a preconceived idea of what I wanted to do. But in the meantime, well, that day, uh, and the day before, I've been watching um, uh, No Country for Old Men in my trailer <laughs> over and over again. And when I got into that scene, there, that, uh, you know, Javier Bardem's sort of like stillness was, you know, my interpretation of that stillness kind of came through. Um, and uh, shooting it was great. She was phenomenal. Uh, you know, she, we, we shot just that one take. That was it. Wow. And two cameras. That was it. And, was there uh, a lot of people on the set when the, the scene, or was it just kind of like isolated scene? Yeah, it was pretty isolated. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. yeah. But that was that was one of those things that like we kind of shot it. You know, we had the the, the blood effect and everything, and kind of the, the whole crew was like, like that's it. Kind of, so, yes. Yeah. So we're gonna have just one more question because we're running out of time. So, who's going to be the last one? Mm -hmm. I guess you pick. Who's going to pick? Go for it. What do you think the 
do you do for fun? Um, uh, I skydive. I've been skydiving for a long time. Um, outdoor and indoor. Um, for 20 some years. Um, uh, I do a lot of yoga, Kundalini yoga. I um, teach Kundalini yoga. Um, and meditation. And, um, and I have a lot of dogs, and I like to train dogs. Um, and what else? What else do I like, Sally? <laughs> Cleaning. <laughs> Clean eating. Clean eating. Yeah, sure. And I'm I'm a vegan, ish. I still have bits of milk, but um, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Since we're out of uh, questions, is there any last things you want to say to the audience? No. Thanks for thanks for asking me good questions, guys. So give it up for one.